now let's get into the chats. Let's see. Uh, Danny says, love your content. Small criticism, not financial advice. It's become impossible to watch. I would love to hear a dialogue, much more than long answers, especially from Guy. <laughs> I, thought, I thought I had the wrongest, longest answers. Thanks for keeping us informed. And then he says, just long answers. Uh, would love more of a dialogue. Maybe not three people with so similar vision. I had the same vision. But love to hear from others too. This, see, this is the problem uh, with us is that me, Guy, and Ben, we pretty much see things relatively the same way. They are a little bit off from me and how they invest. They're not touching anything. I think Guy's maybe buying some Bitcoin. And uh, Ben is too. I'm just like, I'm just buying. I'm just dollar cost averaging. I started that, uh, the full dollar cost averaging like two months ago because I thought, I'm never going to make it be right 100% of the time. So they're... But the other parts like where we see like Fed rate hikes and we see where the economy is going and there's some downfalls we see we think are coming forward. We, we agree on those things. So for that one, well, I'll talk to the guys and see if we can switch some things up a bit. I thought it would be interesting maybe like instead of having just like questions, like uh, one day we could just uh, like I could just have two co-hosts and we can go over the news. And uh, they could tell me, you know, their insights and what it means. And then can pull up some, some charts and things like that. Maybe that would be it. I don't know. So we'll see. So good, uh, good comments. Uh, Danny. And he says, why do some of you wrench his next or nickname channel supporters? Because I, I made everybody administrators. And the reason is not so I could shut people up, but we had so many scammers late last year that i had to i just admins everybody that would show up like more than five or ten times i was like you're an admin you're an admin you're an admin and then it, it just cleans up the uh the chats really nicely instead of having like people going you know investor janet reno is the best find her on telegram at blah 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 and i'm like really ah biggie uh, Dan on Twitter, that's me. Beardy says, don't sell until the bull run. Beardy, Beardy is talking about his EOS holdings. And AU106, Robbie still DCing into ADA? Yeah, I'm DCing into Bitcoin, Ethereum, Avalanche, Near, ADA, Chainlink, some other stuff, I forget. But yeah, either every day or once a week. And that's it. Andrew's got a good point. See, this is why I, I don't like to do Q&A so much, more like just the points and bounce off them. We don't need banks to custody Bitcoin. We must do it ourselves. They will manipulate the price to do with gold. And that's, a, that's it. They're holding paper Bitcoin. And this is the same problem. This is the same problem that happened on FTX. FTX was supposed to hold a billion dollars worth of Bitcoin. And then they figured out, well, once they you know figured out it was insolvent and it was a scheme, that they only bought like roughly a million dollars worth of Bitcoin. And my question was this, well, if they would have kept buying Bitcoin like they were supposed to with their customers' money, where will we have been? Maybe that 100,000 Bitcoin price prediction I had would have actually worked. Who knows? But uh, I have no idea. But yeah, you can have all the major banks and this Deutsche Bank. No, sorry, not Deutsche Bank. Credit Suisse. I was get those two confused. I don't know why. Uh, they were doing some shady things anyhow. Uh, they've had uh, multiple reprimands and they've had uh, multiple fines and spoofing of uh, metals and things like that, just like Chase Bank. And, uh, you know, I'm sure if they got into the game, they would do whatever they need to do to, to manipulate Bitcoin and things like that. So yeah, it's important that we hold it because we're the only ones that can say, yes, I have it. It's not just paper Bitcoin, which is irrelevant anyhow. Uh, meme says we're going mainstream. I have to agree, I mean, especially after yesterday's uh, video and this one today. I can see it. <laughs> Wish the U.S. government would get her. We're not all George. Please look on the Epic Cash, not a security. Uh, Dibsy says we've been in one depression next. Maybe. Who knows? There's a very scary chart out there, which takes a look at. The only time that we have a, a retraction of money, which just happened, uh, we get a, a depression. 
Great Depression. And that just happened like a month ago. So if you want to scare yourself, you can look at that. Will Europeans ever be able to retire? I don't know, but there's a bunch of civil unrest going on in France right now on that very subject. So hopefully at some point. Hello, Sin City. Uh, you grow, I grow, says, uh, Dan, it takes a lot of guts to admit you were wrong. It could be wrong. That's why I'm here. Uh, sometimes, but uh, I've been doing it my entire life, so <laughs> it's actually second nature. So, no. I mean, when you when you screw up, you just have to say, man, I screwed that up. And then uh, this is, I'm going to fix it, and then we're going to go. It's, I mean... I learned this very critical skill in the in the army. Uh, when you screw up, you say I screwed up uh, because if you don't correct it fast, then people die. So uh, that's just why um, it's very easy for me to say it. Let's see. <laughs> Rookie numbers on likes. And that's right. I'm not your dad. You guys can do what you want to. That's right. Uh, Silmira says, we will go to that one currency, CBDC. I got to tell you, I was very, uh, I was, I was always under the impression that people were smart enough to, to figure it out with CBDCs and like, we wouldn't, we wouldn't go that route. And then with governor DeSantis coming out and having that press conference saying, we don't want CBDCs. And then, uh, Senator Ted Cruz from Texas saying, you know, we need to eliminate CBDCs and not make them, make, make them happen. Even as all that happens, there's a great video from Simon Dixon and he just lays it out. He goes, look, they're inevitable. And they're going to happen. And before you say, well, Simon Dixon is obviously a, a, a government shill. Well, he's not. He's uh, he's a Bitcoin OG and has been on the channel many a time. And he's just like, look, it's inevitable that it's going to happen. And we just need to prepare for it. And that's why we need to teach everybody as much as we can about the digital asset, crypto space, and about self-custody. It's not so much about having your Bitcoin and putting on a platform and gaining yield off of it, right? Uh, we need to actually say, no, no, no. We need to custody that because that is mine and uh, we don't want to have fractional reserve banking and whatever you're doing with my Bitcoin to dilute the, the value of it. And that's the big thing. So uh, I think that's why I'll be here for quite a while. <laughs> uh, let's see. Hello, everybody. Uh, we are losing our freedoms in the CBDC. Just another step. It could be like the digital yuan, or it could be, you know, like like uh, Giancarlo says that he thinks that we can have a digital dollar and still remain private. I think he is wrong, but uh, you know, hopefully. But yeah, it's going to happen. Let's just accept that. That's okay. The CBDs happen, and and then we we have that, and all. This is the great thing about the CBDCs is that it only takes one time. It only takes one time for someone to get screwed over to where they're like, hey, I try to use my CBDCs and there's this, you know, whatever, social score or they deem that I wasn't uh, or I was, a, they, they, they said that I was a, an undesirable person and they, and they shut off my account. It only takes that one time for that to happen to somebody because that one person tells 10 and 10 tells 100 and 100 tells thousands. And uh, that's where things just explode. Here's a prime example. What happened the last two weeks when all the banks collapsed? Not all the banks, but you know, we had a couple, you know, one bank collapsed, then we had uh, Silvergate, Signature, and Silicon Valley Bank, and now we have Swiss Bank. All those banks that started to collapse, which I think there's more on the horizon, what happened? Well, everybody started to talk. And you know what's great about the, the internet age is that it just takes very uh, one person to send a tweet or an Instagram post or TikTok or whatever. And then everybody is like, wow, I can't leave my money in this bank because they're not insured. And who knows what's going to happen later? I've had so many people call me or text me and say, hey, where should I put my, my money? Because now I'm scared that I won't be able to get it back out. I'm like, well, yeah. So again, uh, it's, it worked out pretty well with the banks. I think this fractional reserve 
that they're you know doing a fractional reserve lending it's it can only last for so long in this digital age and then with the cbdc if it if it comes down to it and they start to control people all i got to say is well I thought it was cool until it wasn't. It's a good thing that uh, I know this guy named Rob and he's got this show and he talks about the Bitcoin where I can opt out. Well, maybe I'll just do that. It's inevitable. It's an, it's right, right? I mean, am I off on that one? It just seems very, it's quite simple. Anyhow, Aristotle says, Rob, I do my own research and get more and more confused about everything. Me too. I must be honest. Uh, you know, like that article I talked about, that that Forbes, the top five banks in, in, in the country, they came out and Silicon Valley Bank was like <laughs> the top one. How many people did due diligence on that article? How many people did due diligence on FTX? How many people did due diligence on those banks? Just investors and, and you know, people who, who bought stock in those publicly traded companies. How many people did that? And they didn't get it right. So I think that... Uh, What's the people who scare me are the people who are 100% sure of themselves. Those people scare the hell out of me because I'm like, I don't think anybody should be like that. I really do think that we should, uh, there, there should be some part of us. that's like, well, I don't know about that. Cause I, that, doesn't, that doesn't make, that doesn't make sense. Or I, I don't know, know the whole story. The example would be like, you can look at 30 different data points on one thing. And then all of a sudden you look at this one data point that, you know, totally invalidates your your whole thesis how many times have you watched the history channel and that's happened to to people like that so for me i'm just like well i don't know where things are going but i know if i stick around for the long haul i should be okay and i try to pick uh the best products i possibly can i'm gonna get things wrong but that's okay because i don't have to have 20 winners i just have to have one or two that uh, skyrocket same thing with the internet age you didn't have to have so what if you screwed up on pets.com and AOL? Well, if you just had a little little Google, a little Amazon, it worked out okay. Okay. Hey, Rob, when Flappy launched? Is that a Twitter website? We're going with that right now. We already have the web two developed. The game is ready to go. We're just, we're just waiting for Apple to give us the approval. That's the easy part. And the web three is 80% done. So we're trying to get it out in May. And then maybe June. So everything's there. But it's going to be different how we do it. It's not going to be heavy on tokens. It's going to be, there's going to be NFTs for power ups and things like that. But it's going to be a very simple game. And we're going to have a product before we do anything. That's the secret. Like a real secret. That's a good question. Airdrop for subscribers. Yeah, I probably should do that. It's a good one. Ah, <laughs> PHX, that's a great question. Fantastico. So the question is, what do those listed rules mean? Great question. So I made these during, right, bef right around the time of uh, the Celsius collapse. And I really started to harp on them on the, during the, right before the Voyager collapse. And there's five rules. And most of you know this, so you can just tune this out. It's all gone meaning everything you invest is probably all gone anyhow. That's your mentality you should have. So what does that mean? Don't invest more than you can afford to lose. If you have a mortgage and, you're, and your house costs $2,000 a month and you make $3,000 a month or whatever you're, you're, you're making, don't spend $3,000 a month in crypto. That's ridiculous. Maybe five bucks, 10 bucks, I don't know. But it's all gone. Don't invest more than you can afford to lose. Everything's a scam until proven otherwise. Even if you hear from me, it's probably a scam. Just say it's a scam until proven otherwise. Verify, don't trust. Nothing gets left on exchanges, zero. So you can buy and sit around there. And I know there's different places where people who are traders who want to you know, have their, their, their fill orders uh, uh, put in. That's fine. But the best way, nothing on exchanges. Put them on your cold storage device. You can use the exchanges, right? But just pull them off. No leverage. I'm sick of hearing about the people who use 50 to 100x leverage and don't make it. I'm tired. I get that, those emails weekly. Um, there's a caveat to that too. If you want to use like a two or three x leverage, have at it. I'm not your dad, 
But for me, I don't use leverage because I think it's a little risky, especially the 1500 X. You might as well just, you're playing with fire. The last one, take profits, meaning nobody ever went broke taking profits. I'm pretty sure that in the last bull run, I'm pretty sure everybody here thought that they could probably take a little more profits during that time. <laughs> that's, that's really it. That's my rules. <laughs> Mike Bennett, everybody's always wrong. Yeah. Martinell says, isn't AI just going to disrupt all this? Ah, maybe. I think, I think Simon Dixon said it. He said, You're, we're going to have an AI algorithm or artificial intelligence, which will dictate what and how much of the CBDCs are actually put out and who gets what at the right flow at the right time. Scary, right? So AI to disrupt this, maybe it'll, maybe it'll come up with a better idea. Who knows? Mm, do you think Tether will collapse eventually? I, I've, I've had my fears on Tether for quite some time, but again, wrong, because which one of the stable coins lost their peg so far? Luna, USDC, I want to say BUSD, a little bit. Tether, nope. So I'm not saying to put everything in Tether. I'm just saying, just giving you a little history that uh, Tether is so far so good. Oh, excellent. You grow. If you want more recent mortgage data, check out Black Knight Mortgage Data. The using inputs of Fannie and Freddie Mac. Charts are only 30 years. Excellent. I will definitely do that. Black Knight. Got it. <laughs> Two EO should cover retirement. Yep. RS says one elastic gold and graphics look great. Uh, that game is the you can you can get an early rush and or get an early alpha and play it, but um, I believe they're putting the public game out in August or September. Things change change a little bit over there, but they did pretty good. They had a great launch, and I wish them the best. Let's see. Guy, guy is a doomer. He is great though. I think guy, guy's pretty upbeat, quite honestly. I mean, he's just kind of like, but you got to understand, you know, like guy, guy was in the UK and he saw, I mean, the the crushing inflation that's going on over there, and he's got family over there still. So I think it's a little bit more difficult. Like here, like in the states, like we don't see it as bad. Like I just, I'm like, well, the eggs are the eggs are priced pretty good, so inflation's not too bad. Like here in Puerto Rico. You know, prices are always high and gas for the leader is actually down. So I'm like, that's pretty good. But uh, no, nah, guy, I think guy's middle of the road, pretty even keel. keel. And I think, uh, I know people will say, well, Ben's the biggest doomer out there. And he's just uh, Mr. You know, uh, poor potty and hates everything. Like, no, trust me. Behind the scenes, Ben's like, yeah, we're going to go pretty far. I just don't think it's going to happen in the next six months. And I got to agree with him. <sighs> do you think with nasdaq and german bank that crypto could have an early start of a bull run i think what it would be i think that would be a nice kickoff but i think what would really happen is if uh we start to see i hate to say this but more bank failures, which will give more attention to alternative investments such as uh, Bitcoin and digital assets. Mostly Bitcoin, though, because that's what people kind of feel it is It is for. And then um, I got to tell you, we might have a little mini bull run in, uh, for the next FOMC meeting if uh, Jerome Powell doesn't, if he just says, OK, no, no rate hikes this time around. We see that we could see a little bit of a bounce, but I don't know about a bull run. Bull run. There's too many. There's too many factors out there that uh, inflation is too high. People are still concerned about that, and uh, we'll see. But again, you know, it's the economy doesn't bounce back first. It's it's uh, equities that bounce back first, then the economy follows. There you go. Me and Barry doing a uh, joint stream one day. Now that would be good. We'd call it, uh, we'd call it uh, EOS Brothers. 
And then we would just talk about EOS for like two hours straight. Uh, EOS won't make it the next bone. How dare you, Chris? How dare you? I have all my money in EOS. I'm just kidding. Uh, let's see. Eric Murphy says, what's up, bro? Question, you think crypto IRAs that are using Coinbase are in trouble due to the SEC's attack on Coinbase? We talked about this in depth yesterday about what the SEC might be looking at. And again, we went back with, uh, with Simon Dixon and he pretty much said, he's like, look, he goes, both sides are not telling the full story. Coinbase isn't telling the full story and neither is the SEC. And he talked about how the different licenses that they have and how they're supposed to onboard their customers are supposed to be done and how they're actually doing it. And, uh, you know, how also the SEC is not approving anything uh, and how they are actually sending a little bit of guidance, but they're not approving squat. So he goes, everybody's not telling the full truth. So that's why I said we have to go to war with them in the legal process and they have to be sued. And I'm glad that this Wells notice got served to Coinbase and now we can get this all figured out. I don't like to drag things out. And I got to tell you, if the Fed would have, you know, just come out and on fire earlier and raised, raised rates higher quicker, we wouldn't be in this mess right now. But like, okay, well, that sucked, you know, three months ago, four months ago. And we're kind of in the, in the low, but, you know, we're recovering. Now we got to grind things out with these stupid zero or 25 basis point hikes for who knows how long. Yeah. It's a good question. Whatever did happen to Sunday pump days? I'd like to see that. Watto. Enjoy your videos. My question is a content creator. How do you manage viewer retention? Probably the toughest part right there is um, when you're trying to get people to stick around, it's, um, well, there's two things. First of all, you have to find, you know, how you do things and how your voice is. Because I don't sound like Altcoin Daily. And Altcoin Daily doesn't sound like Hashoshi. And, you know, vice versa. And Ben doesn't sound like any of us. So, like, in this one, you just have to find the way that you do things and then try to make it as interesting as possible. And I always try to condense it as, as much as I can. Before I was doing like, like this is a long video because we're doing q and I try to keep things short and sweet as best I can, give my opinions and get out. That's the best I can tell you. Let's see. <laughs> Deutsche Bank in trouble. Sorry, it was uh, Credit Suisse, excuse me. Rob, do you think AI will take over crypto for humans chance to realize what's happening? No, I think uh, AI will take over other industries uh, before then. And um, I'm just more concerned about uh, these deep fake videos. I mean, how easy would it be for them to do uh, President Zelensky to come out and say, hey, Russia, we're sorry, and we surrender. And everybody lay their, their weapons down. And it looks just like Zelensky, sounds just like Zelensky, and everything else. How we cause some problems? Why buy Bitcoin at 27K when you can wait and buy at a million? That's true. Danny's got a good point. There's an old adage, selling may and go away. Learned it from you, Rob. I got to tell you, if this recession comes in when people think it is, it'll be the most accurate time I've ever heard of it because everybody kind of is trying to, is saying that this recession is going to kick off brutally in Q3. So, you know, looking at end of June and uh, early July, if that's the truth, then selling in May would have been a pretty great deal. I personally... I probably won't. Well, we'll see, actually. I can't say anything. I'm just going to look at some data. Here, how do you think Alaska will do? Uh, the state or the game? The state, I think, does fine. Uh, the game itself, probably do pretty well. It's got uh, great graphics, and the people really believe in the project. Let's see. And I think we're coming up on it. Ah, it's a great question. It's a great question. What will a bank do that exchanges won't? You know what they'll do that exchanges won't do? Name recognition. Here's it. Here's, here's what we have. You can go to an exchange right now and buy crypto because we've done that before. It's no problems. Now talk to the normies, the people who have never done it. And they say, I, wanna, I might want to buy some crypto. 
okay, we want to go on exchange? No, because I heard about FTX and what happened there. I don't want to do that. Or I heard about uh, this thing called BlockFi or Celsius or Voyager. So I don't want to lose all my, my crypto. I want to, I'd like to get in some way. Okay. Well, also Wells Fargo is offering this too. And Chase Bank, JP Morgan, Fidelity, whatever. Oh, I don't know. I don't, they're not FTX, are they? I trust them. That's the only thing they can do different. It's name recognition and trust. And if you can do that, then you can get a lot of people going, well, okay. All these guys have, have my, they've, they've charged me overdraft fees for so long. I trust them. <laughs> that's the mentality, man. I know. So that's it. Yeah. Brandon McNamara's got a good one. Say you screw up, say you screw up. Don't be an SPF and say, sorry, I messed up. And I bought a nice condo here in the Caribbean for my parents. So thank you. Have you heard of Vulcan blockchain yet? I've heard of it. Not really sh sure. I haven't gotten any of it though. It's a great. So what's your thoughts on Peter Thiel selling his crypto on Bitcoin? You understand, this is a great thing. There was a story we covered about a month and a half ago. And when Peter Thiel was talking at Bitcoin Miami, he was talking about how great Bitcoin is and how it's the future and how he really believes in it. And just three weeks or a month beforehand, uh, his investing company sold, I don't want to know if it's all or most, most or all of it. It was a pretty good trade, actually, for that time frame. And if you pin down Peter Thiel and ask him, hey, I thought you said that you believe in it. He's like, well, I believe in it, but it was just overheated and I sold it. So that's what you got to understand. So all the people that you listen to, out there in the cryptoverse, that they say, I believe in it and it's going to be the greatest thing. In the back of your mind, you should be thinking, how much did you sell and how much are you dumping on me? Just remember that. Peter Thiel and who knows how many other ones that are out there. And the only reason we know Peter Thiel did it is because I think it was a publicly traded company, but I could be wrong on that one. But yeah, he sold a bunch of it, almost all of it. <laughs> it's not surprising to me. It's just, I've been here for so long. I just like, well, it makes sense. Uh, hey, Rob, what do you think about other M2? Move to earn products like uh, Without Sweat, for example, Steppen, uh, FitFi. Well, I have Steppen. I actually have it on my phone. There's that one, and then there's uh, Satoshi Miles, or called Smiles. And uh, that is a free app that you use it, you download it, you walk, and it gives you Satoshis. Pretty cool, right? But uh, just know, I don't know if they sell your data. I can't tell you for sure if they do or don't. They probably say they don't. But um, just like how when you came into YouTube, you probably saw an ad, you'll, you'll see some ads and they'll sell you some stuff and that's it. But it's a pretty good trade-off just to stick on your phone, walk around and, and uh, get Satoshis. I mean, I walk all, all day long. Meme says, in my opinion, there is a silver lining after CBDCs are a reality. People will be more comfortable with Bitcoin and crypto. That's a good, I never thought of it that way. Yeah, it's true. You know what would be interesting? And I think that's true because it, it, people, like they're not really used to having wallets on their phone per se, but they're used to like a, a Venmo, a Cash App and a PayPal. So when they can kind of look at this and go, well, that's my whole thing and, and I can push it this way or that way. When they take a look at CBDCs and they move things around, Maybe it won't be such of a big deal when they have, uh, you know, hot wallets like a MetaMask or something else. So, yeah, that's a good point. Uh, that's the point. Oh. The Fed might as well create an account number, same as your social. Give you some digital dollars if you behave, shut you out if you don't behave. Uh, again, I think uh, that'll probably happen, and I, but it only takes one time for things to collapse. Some people will be like, well, you know, they shut it down, but it was my fault because, you know, I had too many Twinkies and, you know, you can't have that much sugar in America or whatever. I'm just kidding. But if they shut people out, 
and people don't like that. And then we go to social media and said, this was shut out and they were tracking this and here's my data. And, you know, I couldn't buy gas anymore because, you know, ESG. And uh, that's what will lead back to, to crypto, Bitcoin digital assets. That's how I see it. ACA, Bloomberg, Beardy gives a thumbs up. My life is complete. I cannot type. No, that was fine. Gary says, pretty new to staking. What's the rule of thumb when collecting your rewards? Daily, weekly, monthly, yearly, what's the norm in your... So uh, it depends on the product. Like for me... Um, so it pretty much just comes automatically. I know like with uh, with the Cardano stake pool, again, shameless plug, link in the description. Like we don't touch anything. This, the, the stake pool operators don't do anything. It's it's all done behind the scenes and you get it into your wallet, whether that be uh, Daedalus or Yoroi or Ada Light or uh, Nami or whatever you want to do. Every five days you get you get those rewards. Near protocol is pretty much the same thing. It just kind of gives you uh, automatically. Polka dots. You know, I don't think you collect those and you just put in, but some you actually have to go in. Like with Gensu Kishi, you put them in, you're, you're staking, and then it adds up, and then you get it. I just, whenever I can remember, honestly, uh, and just go from there. Yeah, well, she's social classes goes away, and everyone can look at each other the same. That would be nice. We'll see. Uh, Ledger is the best. That's what I'm going to get. Mm, I didn't miss anything. <laughs> Hundred X made ten bucks up. Ah, uh, thank you. It's a good question. Charles says for someone seniors have issues with using Ledger, how save or unsave other wallets such as Exodus. Exodus. Is that a if it's a hot wallet? First of all, Charles, go to the there's a website. Dan teaches crypto, 100% free. And I talk about the difference between a cold storage wallet and a, and a, and a hot wallet. Exodus, I thought, was a, was a hot wallet because you're connected to the internet. I could be wrong. Correct me in there. But anytime you have a hot wallet, it's a little bit more dangerous, I guess you could say, than a cold storage where you have nothing connected to the internet, where it's a very it's a poss not possible. I'm sure everything's possible. Very tough to, to, to hack. So Exodus, this is how I see it. What the hell is it? I had it. Ah. So I talked about this card before, Arculus, right? And it's kind of like, like, like a hybrid between a cold and a, and a hot storage wallet. I have my MetaMask wallet in here. And I also have my Nano Ledger. And I got all this stuff right here. So it's just like a bank, right? Would you walk around with you know, $100,000 in, in your wallet, in your, in your back pocket? Or would you keep $100,000 in your bank protected and maybe keep like 20 bucks or so in your wallet? That's how I see, see both of these things. I think that's, that, that's the best way to look at it. Ooh. How do I convince my girlfriend to invest in crypto? Eric, you don't. You just... Don't you, you, you can talk, talk to her about it, but, uh, you know, at some point she'll, she'll come your way. And the reason why I say that is because I've had other people who have said my wife, my girlfriend, my husband is going to kill me because I told them to get into Bitcoin at $69,000 or Ethereum at $5,500 or so whatever else it was. And I'm like, Ugh. so for me, I just say, look, if you want to learn about it, that's cool. I'm not going to push you. And it's up to you because, you know, just better that way. Mm. <laughs> you know, that's news. Thoughts on a CBDC pegged to a $32 trillion deficit? America, baby. America. We're going to increase that debt ceiling. Don't you worry. That's the only time Congress can actually get together and agree on something. Uh, yeah, guy's a realist. I gotta agree. And 
I hate Gary Gensler. I don't hate him. I just think he's... Uh... Here's a plot twist. Maybe Gary Gensler just wants to usher in uh, Bitcoin this whole time. Maybe he knew that Coinbase would never sue him and the SEC. So he goes, you know what? I got to push their hand because I want to make sure everybody gets Bitcoin. So I'm going to sue them and we'll eventually lose, lose the case. And I can usher in Bitcoin behind the scenes. Fade to black. I know. It's a pretty good idea, right? Maybe not. Okay. Uh, Renzo, this is a great question. Next administration will be crypto friendly. And I think this is it. This will be the last one. Um, yeah, I don't see the Democrats winning this next election. I just don't. Uh, we've already flipped to uh, not we, I'm not a Democrat or a Republican. I just kind of vote for the best person. Um, the house has already been flipped. So, you know, it's, it's uh, Republican controlled Senate. I think it's a narrow is it still a narrow? Yeah, I think it's, uh, well, let's see. I think it's still 50-50 with the VP cutting the tie. Senate control. Yeah, whatever. And then, uh, of course, you know, you've got the president who is a Democrat. I don't, th I don't see them, them winning. So if they get out, then depends on who the next person comes in. If uh, Trump runs again, he's not very, he's not very crypto proponent of that. We'll say that. Uh, if you've got uh, something like DeSantis, sure. But some, some people hate DeSantis and some people don't want to win. All right. Uh, but I think there's more people on the, the Republican side that are more pro-crypto than there are on the Democratic side. Uh, I think Elizabeth Warren is the far left uh, for crypto, we'll say. So yeah, if they just depends on who's in office. I am real. Unlike this green screen back here. Exactly. Uh, matter, matter of fact, I'll be traveling next week. So you... And then we go, we'll be back in uh, Texas uh, around April 1st. So expect a new green screen. What did I miss? I'm going to give you the opportunity to watch it right now. Everybody, that's it for today. We've gone 52 minutes. So look, thanks for hanging out with me. Almost 2,000 people just hanging around. That's great. If I uh, just need a favor, like today's video, Thumbs up, just consider subscribing, all that great stuff. And that is it. Also, if you're in the Puerto Rico area, uh, tomorrow morning we'll be going to Amigos de los Animales to walk the shelter dogs at 8 in the morning. It's a beautiful, scenic walk. And, of course, the shelter dogs get out. And I always post about that on Twitter and the address and everything else. We go from 8 o'clock to around 9, 9.30, and I buy everybody breakfast. So if you want to stop by and uh, do something good, Hang out with me for a bit. Great. I'll see you tomorrow morning, 8 in the morning. If not, I'll see you for tomorrow's video. But that's it for today. So thanks so much, everybody. See you on the next one. Adios.